yourself. You try to make yourself somebody has status and power and give yourself a little air here and there. You have to inflate yourself a little. It helps, you know. We don't want to make fools of ourselves all the time. We don't know too much about what we're doing, but we don't want to say that. We're too proud. You know what I mean. Now, people who have those funny voices, they talk right up here in the nose. Do they have to do that? No. What can you do to change it? Ah, I thought you'd never ask. This is a program dedicated to the mask. The mask. The masking of America. The buzzing of America. You see, 007 talks up here around the mask, around the lips and nose. The voice is built on a megaphone basis, from the top of your eyebrows down to the bottom of your fifth and sixth cervical vertebrae. Michael Jackson, you see, here in town, when he talks, he always has that charming English accent. And he always sounds so self-possessed, so in charge of things. And he may not be on the mark, but his voice is always there. And it's always charming to hear him as 007. Now, why can't you have 007 or Mrs. 007 or Ronald Coleman's charming tones of yesteryear or Charles Boyer or these years? And even if you have an accent and you come from New York, why can't you sound like, who loves you, baby? Why can't you be... Another Telly Savalis. Why can't you be a Ms. Telly Savali, a Mrs. Telly Savali? Why do you have to shriek, Harry? Why do you have to have that voice? Because you don't know how to focus. That's why. Now, what does that mean, focus? Why don't you get your voice focused? What's he talking about? What's he talking about? You're focused up here. Remember I told you, I said it just a few moments ago. It passes us by. You haven't had a single lesson on your speaking voice. So you talk up here in the upper one-third of the mask. You see the mask is a blend of oral, oral and nasal resonance around here, the lips and nose. You're talking up there in the upper throat. You want to make the sound a little more oral. If you say right, if you say really, if you use buzzwords, right, really, do, go, you're going to energize your voice. You want to energize your voice if you have that nasal sound. Now, some of the famous voices talk up there, and they energize it up there. They're on the 30-yard line. You knew who that was. You heard it once. You didn't hear it twice. Once is enough. It's like some people say, I told you once. I'm not going to tell you twice. When you hear a certain voice, you know where it's coming from. It's coming right from the schnoz up there. Jimmy Durante used to say, you got to talk more in the schnoz, or that's where he's singing from, wherever it is. That's true, but some of us have too much schnoz. So you want to bring it down and make it a little more oral and blend it with the oral resonance. Hmm, one, hmm, two. I call that the humming of America. You can hum your way to a better voice. Does Andy Rooney want to change his voice? Nah. Does Dr. Ruth want to change? Nah. Does Woody Allen want to change his crotchety voice? Nah. Do you want to change your voice? I think maybe you should. Maybe you should. All the world is queer, save thee and thee, said the Quakers. And lately, I have doubts about thee and thy voice. So let's try to change the voice that you have. Would you bear with me? Because I used to talk up there. And then I had well-intentioned help. Well, I talked all the way down here and lost my voice. I sounded like Henry Kissinger before Henry was there without the accent. I've been through 12 MDs. I talk about it. And I didn't get any help. I finally ran into somebody who did know about the voice. And that's how I got into this field. And that's why I'm talking to you about your voice. You can self-help. You want to try it? The voice has got to be blended over here. <laughs> you hum your way to a better voice. Oh, there are those who tell you you have to posture your head. You shouldn't cough. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. You should change your personality. You should change the way you think. I say poppycock to all of that. Just change the way you're using your voice. You don't want to change your personality because you're driving the car a certain way. You want to know how to drive the car. You want to know what is right and what is wrong. With a speaking voice, to get the sound that's really you, that's star quality, you simply need the right direction. And all too often, you've never had that right direction. Now, why is that so? Because 
Between the ages of 12 and 15, when you change from a boy to a man, from a girl to a woman, from a kid to an adult, you don't change your voice. 50% of us, I estimate, talk too high, too nasal, too thin, too nerdy. How are you? You're doing fine? You feel good? We sound like we come from left field. Now, why don't we change that? Because we don't know we can get a better voice. We really believe, you believe, that the voice that you have is the voice that you're going to live and die with. That's wrong. It's a myth. It's a long-lasting myth. So you talk up there, and then you hear, all these years I want to hold you in my arms and tell you, Michelle, I love you. Darling, 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 hey, who loves you, baby? You hear great voices. You hear James Garner, Anne Bancroft, Cheryl Ladd, and you love those voices. I've been privileged to work with some of those stars. And I could tell you that you can have star quality voice. And if you have trouble with your voice, laryngitis, hoarseness, difficulty being he heard, voice goes out and fails, you don't have to have that. If you use your voice properly, the voice will go on and on and on like Bob Hope. And his voice is right up in the mask around the lips and nose. Now, if you talk all the way down here, you're going to lose your voice, in my opinion. You can get a condition called the strangled voice. I can't talk. Well, your voice comes and goes. The medics will tell you it's neurological. They'll tell you it's gene-related, possibly. I won't tell you that. I'll tell you that it's a voice problem with psychological overtones that has an excellent prognosis, an excellent chance of changing. It's the same way of changing from that voice, if you have that, to changing over here, if you have the right direction. But you have to want to do it. Now, do you want to get a better voice? Do you want to sound like Anne Bancroft, Diane Carroll, Cheryl Ladd? Do you want to sound like James Garner? Do you want to sound like Peter Jennings? Do you want to sound like Dan Rather? Not so much Dan Rather. Maybe we'll take Walter Cronkite. Do you want to sound like some of the great voices of yesteryear and today? When you hear people on radio and television, you say, it's amazing that voice doesn't go with that person. They talk like this on, on television, and they are very appealing, very handsome, and they're very, very attractive, men and women. And they sound like, Harry, Harry. Now, why do they do that? They look so attractive to us, but their sound is infamous. You hear it on the news, and you see it in person. And you've got to go because it's time. See, you've got an appointment, right? I'll make you a wager. If you had a voice that really said something about you and was good, like James Garner or Anne Bancroft or Kirk Douglas, people would stay around and listen to you, and they wouldn't go anywhere. Now, Andy Rooney, I don't know about you. I think Andy will do it for us in about three minutes. And I love Andy Rooney. But that nasal tone has got, got to be one of those sounds that's right out of New York City. He fits right in. I don't know if he comes from New York City. Andy is a great sound. And you have that sound, too. But can you afford it? Andy is a trademark voice, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean. He's a trademark voice, and it works very well for him. But when you say hello... When you say hello, I'm going to ask you this. Does your voice say goodbye? You talk on the phone, you sound like this, you talk like that, you talk screechy. Why can't you have a voice that gets you heard, liked, and listened to? Even if it's a trademark voice. Well, you don't have, you don't have the, uh, the, the, the real guts to sound like Dr. Ruth. That's what it really is, in part. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you don't want to sound like Mr. Rogers. Is your mother home? So you lower the voice all the way down here, and you talk like this, and you're losing your voice, and you wonder why you go from one doctor to the other, and they tell you it's just something in the genes. It's neurological. You know what I mean. And they tell you to take potions and lotions and shots and all of that and rest your voice. I don't, I don't go for that, you see. I believe if you put your voice up in the mask around the lips and nose, mm -hmm, if you buzz there, if you hum, mm -hmm, one, mm -hmm, two, you might find 
that your voice lasts throughout the day and it has a great sound. It sounds rich and full and open. And you're going to say, I was born with the voice I have. I wasn't born this way. I used to talk like this. This is Morty Cooper. And then I had two well-intentioned college professors at Brooklyn College put me all the way down here. I talk like this. So I lost my voice. That's how I got into this field. Some people call it a racket, if you know what I mean. It, you, it can be a racket. I'm a voice coach, so you can't help yourself. But I'm saying, why don't you get a voice that you like and people like to listen to? Do you want to talk like that all the time when you wake up? Why don't you sound like Anne Bancroft, Cheryl Ladd, James Garner? I have a couple of books that have uh, been out for a while. Change Your Voice. You change your life? You change your life if you change your voice? Yeah, I think so. And it's in the 11th printing. It tells you how to self-help. Self-help, that means that you can do it for yourself with the simple techniques. And because business was booming, we came up with another book, which is also doing very well. It's called Winning With Your Voice, Five Minutes a Day to a More Effective Voice. And why not? Why don't you get a winning voice that really speaks for you? Are you there? I'd like to hear you get up in the morning and sound so good that when people hear you on the phone, you don't have what I call the grumpies that Johnny Carson calls it, or the morning voice when you sound like this. They say it's a pleasure to talk with you. Instead of, did I wake you? Did I wake you? Have you ever heard people when you're answering the phone at 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, did I wake you? Or whenever it is, did I, did I wake you? Do you have one of those voices? Why don't you get a voice that really says something about you, that represents your personality? Hum, 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 the first bar of happy birthday. They call me the happy birthday man. Because I always suggest the humming of America. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you do it, your voice basically goes up into the mask. Now, there's another thing. You take your finger, put it at the bottom of your breastbone, and it's called the Cooper Instant Voice Press. It's named after me. Why not? Everybody names something after them. And you go, ah, and your voice basically is anchored. It comes out in seconds. So if it's too high, it comes down. If it's too low, it comes up. Why don't you get a better voice? Why don't you have a voice that really says something about you instead of having a voice like that, instead of sounding like Harry, because you don't believe you can do that, do you? And I'm saying, why not? And I'm going to say something else. Most of us aren't born with natural voices. They're developed. The people that you admire in radio, on stage, television, and the movies, the ones that have the good voices, are not born with them, per se. They develop those voices. And it is my view, you have that option too, to have star quality voice. <clears throat> if you do a lot of that, if you're clearing your throat, you have trouble being heard, your voice is failing, you're a voice suicide. You don't have to be that way. You want to get your voice up here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and it gets you heard, it gets you liked, it gets you listened to, instead of talking up there and talking down there. I don't know about you, but I think you can get a better voice. I'm Maud Cooper, your host on a program called Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. Why not? Why didn't you try it too? I'll see you next week. Good night.